My name is Lauren Zallett. I'm the Director of Education and Tour Programs at Eastern State Penitentiary Historic Site here in the U.S. in Philadelphia. I think for me, the most revisionism that I've encountered in history education has been the way that we're taught about the history of slavery in this country. And it's, it's being challenged now that people don't want the history of slavery and its legacy taught in schools. There's this whole anti-critical race theory movement in um, United States educational spaces. And I think that people don't want to face it because it makes them uncomfortable and it makes them feel ashamed. And I think that that probably is true in other cases where historical re revisionism is happening, is that there's a group in power that wants to push a, a certain agenda and they want that agenda to get across and so they don't tell narratives that run counter to that. I think that with that question, it reminds me of what we just heard in the last session where the person asked about where you draw that red line when you want multiple narratives to exist. And that's something that we struggle a lot with in my site, which is not a World War II site, but is a site where we talk about topics that are really difficult and really painful for um, the public to acknowledge. So the history of prison and the way that we still use prison in the United States today and that we're you know, the biggest nation of the free, yet we incarcerate the most um, of our population compared to any other country in the world. And so I think that um, it can be really hard for people to want to do the work of engaging with multiple narratives because it's a lot more easy to just take one story and come up with like, that's the story, that's the whole history, and like, let's just move on instead of trying to make up your own mind about what really happened and trying to draw that red line of like, what is a personal truth? What is a forensic truth that we learn from a scholar or from a textbook? And how do we reckon with those when they don't agree with each other? I think I know that it's possible for those to peacefully coexist because we do it in the site that I work in and I've seen it happen at other sites of conscience around the country but it is really, really hard for visitors to contend with that because of the way that we're taught history in the United States. That's like, here's the story, here's the beginning, here's the good guy, here's the bad guy. And when you have multiple perspectives, it can be really difficult to figure out what, what you think. And history hasn't always been thought of as a place and a subject where you make up your own mind. It's like, no, this is the accurate history. And so how do we make sure that history is being told accurately while also allowing people to come to their own conclusion? So it's hard. And that like came up at the end of that session. And it's a really good question. Yeah, I think that sites of conscience in particular and heritage sites are uniquely positioned to stand up against historic revisionism because they're places where things actually happened and you can't deny that physical evidence and you also can't deny people's personal testimonies. And what I think makes sites of conscience so particularly special is they work so hard to engage with people who experience the atrocities at the sites or descendants of people who experience the atrocities of the site, and they also try to bring people from across different perspectives and different lived experiences into conversation to come up with some kind of reconciliation, some kind of way to move forward. Um, and so I hope that answers your question. <laughs>